In mists and shadow, hope has passed. With darkest shadows, two are tasked. Loyalty binds and breaks and bends, and the dead must now reap to make amends. As sin now revels in Balaki's night, can the broken restore the light? Welcome, friends, to another episode of Curse of Strahd, with me, your dungeon master, Mark Humes. I don't have a funny horror or vampire-themed pun, they're actually quite hard to come up with. So I'm just doing a normal intro. Uh, joining me are these fine people. Uh, we have Rhiannon, Tom, Katie joins Hi. us once again, Trot, and Kim. Welcome, Hello. everybody, uh, to this uh, rather fine Thursday evening. There's a lot of D&D going on today, um, mm. and we are taking part in that. We are we are so much joining D &D. in in our own way. So much d, &D. Um, Hopefully... There won't be any technical issues. Uh, we might have some some times out and stuff like that, but just bear with us. Uh, and apart sense. from that, the only the only other thing to mention is right now going on uh, is D and D Live. You can go to twitch.tv forward slash D and D. There's going to be loads of games uh, across today, tomorrow, and Saturday, which supports Red Nose Day. Um, it's uh, lots of celebrities. There's people from Game of Thrones. There's movie stars and all sorts of playing D and D. Um, I will be appearing each day at about 4 p.m. Eastern time, along with Anna Prosler and Mika Burton, where we'll be talking about the, the what's gone on during the day. We're going to be uh, doing a load of cool stuff with the reality RP show that they're doing um, and basically announcing what's to come. So uh, come and check that out. That's at 4 p.m. So it's a couple of hours after we finish Strand uh, tonight. So come and check that out, friends. Uh, and check out all the awesome D&D going over on twitch.tv forward slash D&D as well. Uh, and that is pretty much it. Is there anything else from my dear friends, my dear good friends? Do you have anything to say for yourselves? Anything you wish to admit to? Anything you want to, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> just really happy I to mean, be here, Mark. You're just happy to be yeah. here. Well, that's why I, I like to hear that. Part trot. That's a nice thing to know that you actually want to be here. That you're not just, you know, here at gunpoint. <laughs> unlike point. normal. <laughs> unlike normal, yeah. Unlike Sundays where I'm like, you better turn up or that's it. You're done, son. Uh, Alright, <laughs> well in that case, uh let's let's play a thing and then I'll do a recap. Oh wait. Yeah. Don't, don't worry about that fan art stuff. Don't worry about that. That was uh, <laughs> it's just Chris Trot there. I pushed the wrong button. Okay. He pushed the wrong button. Right? Leave him alone. Uh, <laughs> last time, last time on Curse of Strahd, after Zeke's death in the search for the Tome of Strahd, Zeros carried her body to the desecrated church in Velaki and sought a deal with Asmodeus. Unknown to him, Zeke was forging her own pact with the Dark powers of Barovia, and both made sacrifices. On returning to the Blue Water Inn, the hallowed bones of St. Andrel, animated and possessing of some holy spirit, attacked Ziki, and Zeros leapt to her defense, destroying the bones and the effect upon them. The rest of the party returned from the Burgomaster's mansion, just in time to aid Zeros and Ziki against the enraged Father Lucian, and a desperate escape from Valaki ensued. Now the party rushed towards a Vistani campsite near the town in hopes of finding allies and shelter. That is where we pick up today, my friends. It is a bleak dawn as the gates of Valaki are just behind you. The grey, dismal, clouded sun is just beginning to kiss the horizon and spread a little light throughout the land but it is also beginning to rain soft drizzling rain as your boots and your claws stamp into the mud of the trail path leading from the west gate of Valaki um, and head into deep unknown woods Jesper at the forefront uh, you lead them not too far, not far from the main gate to Valaki itself, 
uh, to a woodland trail that leads south uh, into the, the forest and the woods near the town. Um, and from there, you can see in the distance a small hill uh, where a few scattered Vistani wagons, um, only a couple of them, seem to wait. Uh, it is not that far from the town itself. You think maybe uh, a couple of hours um, on foot, um, but it is a location. Uh, you know that there are guards within the town of Valaki that are on high alert and are perhaps searching uh, for suspicious folks. You have only just narrowly managed to avoid uh, their attention, leaving just two guards as witnesses to your uh, evacuation from the town. Uh, so my question is, what would you guys like to do? Hmm... Mm. I'd like to know how this walk went. <laughs> <laughs> how awkward was Two it? Two hours that you've been traveling so far. I mean, it's wet, it's uh, cold, but the light is beginning to reveal itself. You don't seem to have been pursued thus far, but you can hear that there is a lot of activity in the town itself. There's a lot of shouting, there's a lot of calling, even though it's distant now, echoing from uh, you know a couple of hours away. Uh, it must be loud enough that it's being carried on the air. I imagine while we were kind of going out of Valaki, near the gates and beyond for about half an hour, there was still a lot of focus on the task of not getting caught. But mm -hmm. I feel like after that, once we feel like we've got clear, that the sounds are going distant, those other thoughts start coming. Mm -hmm. And where there's a bit more time to, you know, ease off the thoughts of being caught and onto uh, yeah. other pressing matters. Other things. Like what? Well, uh, the, if I remember correctly, Rose cast Pass Without a Trace. So you haven't left any tracks in the mud or anything like that, but you are... You have not travelled too far from the gates of Valaki, um, so there is still potential threat uh, if you were to be discovered. Um, but, yeah, you are now travelling down a twisted, winding woodland path that seems to lead south um, through the trees towards this small hill uh, that you can see just rising up, kissing the tops of the dead, gnarled branches. I imagine, unless, correct me if I'm wrong, everyone's dead silent. No one's really communicating I'm, much. I'm talking as much as I normally do. <laughs> I think the only person that might be perhaps offering a couple of words and more from a not wanting to disrupt the silence but more of an, an informative thing is Ismark who is carrying up the rear is constantly checking behind maybe giving like sort of things like still no sign of them uh, I can't really hear them anymore but I can't see them and then long periods of silence and then maybe sort of like checking again just like a short sort of like Still no one as you begin winding your way through. But everyone ah, else yeah, who's it seems that like everyone else is to talk about this first. <laughs> yeah. Oh uh, god. Well my I question is like... is how long does in that case, how long does the silence last? Like, does it last until you arrive at this destination? Or are you gonna talk about this en route? I think I don't think, like, I don't think Rose would. Okay. Unless anyone else brings it up. Yeah. I think Shadow is slowly road. seething mm -hmm. and holding her tongue until she knows it's safe. Okay. It never is. <laughs> I feel like as like Kiki <laughs> is walking, she's like looking at like her her like slight like her longer claws, like like clenching her claws into fists to like try and hide them and like mm -hmm. just Yeah, you can see to, that. Like, yeah. Your arms are thinner. You look a bit more sort of haggard. You don't feel much different. You don't feel as tired, but like looking at your limbs, you can definitely see that there's. You don't look good, uh, certainly. Uh, but you are alive. You've got breath in your lungs and you can feel your heart beat. Is it beating yeah. as slower? Is it. It's <laughs> <laughs> an interesting question. Mm. One you're not quite sure yeah. of the answer. Um, but yeah, well, you travel in silence uh, along this this curved path, as it were, and it doesn't take you very long before 
uh, you begin to see something. The wood, the woods part to reveal an expansive clearing, small grass-covered hill with a few low houses built into its sides. Fog obscures the details, but you can see that these buildings feature elegantly carved woodwork and have decorative lanterns hanging from scripted, uh, sculpted eaves. Atop the hill, above the fog, are a couple of abandoned Bistani wagons, barrel-topped uh, that surround what one would have once been a campsite. There is a small, faded, sputtering column of smoke pouring from a deadened fire. And that is what you see. There are horse tracks. You also begin to see a few bodies laying around the camp as you draw closer. Um, as you part your way through the fog, you can see the silhouettes of corpses laying in the mud. Great. I've had enough. This is too much. First, Valaki, and now this. And I turn and look dead at Xeros. Why? Why did you do it? We don't have time for this, Jesper. Do we not? The Vistani camp. Everyone is dead. Everybody dies. They have their time. <laughs> oh my god. How's Zeke feeling? <laughs> there are a scattering of bodies as you kind of come to a standstill and the fog begins to cling around your legs. Uh, there's maybe a dozen or so, but not... Mm, most of them are not Vistani. You see a couple of Vistani bodies. Their bright clothing just catching the the rising light. Um, they seem to be marred by frost or by flame. But many of the bodies are wear darker clothes, dark browns, dark greens, dark greys. And they all have mutilated ears, long hair, more elven features. Uh, they Some appear to have been dragged from the little homes that have been sort of dug into the hill. Um, crossbow bolts, blades sticking out of them. Um, and at the very top of the hill, by the pittering, sputtering fire, is one large Vistani man, quite muscular. Uh, his doesn't have doesn't appear to be wearing a shirt, but the trousers and the belts are unmistakable. Um, and his throat is slit neatly across the jugular, deep with skill. I understand, Zeros. It takes everything from you. You think I wouldn't have? Jumped at the chance to bring Madam Ava back. What she could have done if she had lived. How she could have guided us. But I did not. Because it is wrong. Yet you made a deal, did you not? You're no better you than him. You just didn't have the strength, Jesper. The strength! Is that what you call it? And I stand close. The Zeros. You call this strength to give in to emotion, to make reckless decisions, not considering the consequences. You call that strength, do you? I'm protecting what I protect, and I brought her back. You failed. Deal with it. But she stands here now. Where's Madame Ava? I hope she's at peace. Ziki, I'm sorry what he's done to you. It wasn't him. I... I made a pact too. What? My death binds me to this place, yes, but you know that. I'm here now, and I'll always be here. If... If this is what it means to... Come back from death, then so be it. 
I will lay waste to every creature in this place until Strahd is dead. That is my, that is my mission now. That you is what I must have do. have a choice. It's not for you to decide. It's in darker hands. You've made a deal with something that's never for free. No. You're going to regret your not. actions. What was Maybe the cost so. for both of you? <laughs> Given your lack of response, I, I think it must be quite a big cost. Strahd must be destroyed. And if you don't destroy him? Then my soul returns to Barovia. Where it has been once and where it will be again. Zeros? I'll just kind of nod. <laughs> and you Ismark. think... You think your deals will be honoured? You think you trust the beings that have the power to do this, to give you trinkets, to bring you back to life? You think they will honor that, or that they do this in your best interests? Are you that stupid? Are you that naive? If they give me one more month with Ziki, then yes. At I what that stupid. cost? At what cost? You will listen to me because I will say this once and then I will never speak of it again. Life is about balance. You cannot have light without dark. You cannot have life without death. You see the consequences breaking this cycle reaps, the price of undeath. You're standing it right now, here, in Barovia. These bodies around you, this undead Strahd, unleashing suffering and pain on a whole realm of innocent people for his eternal life. Grief is a part of life. Grief is the price of love. I walk with grief every day of my damned life. My life's work is to help with people deal with that loss. Your deal, Xeros, and you, Ziki, was selfish. You, Xeros, it was you not having the strength to face up to something that is a fundamental part of life. And now your selfishness has potentially cost the life of a frightened old man. Are you going to make a deal for him? Are you going to share his suffering? You made a deal with the devil. And the devil always wins. So I hope you can live with the consequences of your actions. I hope you make this time worthwhile. And you, Ziki, I thought you would be better. I thought you would smarter. And then that, I just turn and walk away. <laughs> I think as you, you do talk. so... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Ismark and Irina kind of watch and listen. Ismark kind of bristles at some of the stuff being said and he begins moving over towards uh, Zeros and Ziki. Irina looks towards where Shadow's gone. Uh, they kind of share a look together, and then Irina follows Shadow whilst Ismark goes towards Zeros and Ziki. Uh, as he approaches you, uh, Zeros, he just puts a hand on your kind of shoulder. For what is worth, my friend, I can understand. And he just kind of nods. Doesn't look like there is anyone here that can help us, but perhaps there's some supplies. I'm going to go look around. And he just begins heading off towards some of the houses to start looking around. Um, Irina comes up to you, Shadow, uh, kind of follows, um, kind of just kind of lingers behind you for a moment, 
Um, and probably just uh, waits, but is is not trying to intrude, but is there if you want to talk to someone else, but is also staying quite distant if you want to just go off on your own. But she kind of like stands around awkwardly, looking like she wants to say something, but doesn't have the words to say. Uh, what about Jesper and Rose? What about you guys? Um... I'll probably uh, go to both of them. I think that what Shadow says sums up a lot of the way that I'm feeling. I lost a brother. I didn't make the same choice you did. It would not have been right. Ziki, I can't say that I'm not glad to see you alive. However, you have to tell us the consequences of the deals that you've made. We need to know in detail what we need to expect, because if this comes back to bite any of us, then we need to be prepared for that. And then I'll walk away towards Shadow. Okay. Uh, Ziki, Zeros, or Jesper, anything from you guys? Or anything you guys want to say or do? Now is definitely the time. I'll give him a little bit of space, but I'm definitely going to say something. <laughs> sure. So if you want to squeeze it in now, do it. I got nothing. I think Xeros, yeah, I don't know if Xeros has much to say. Uh, he made his choice, and I think... <laughs> I mean, yeah, he still feels like it's the right thing, but sure, he yeah, doesn't know how to communicate it, in a sense. Well, maybe that's Xeros' way, is he just doesn't say anything, he just doesn't argue back. Let's them think that they've won the argument, per se, even if he knows what's right to him. Like, he knows it's selfish, but also, he didn't do it for them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, we just kind of see Xeros kind of look glancing over everybody else, but no words are said. Um... You want him dead, yes. We do. Here. When you ran off from the house, we found this. I throw the Tome of Knowledge on the floor. It's the wet grass. Read that. See yourself in it. Don't become the same thing. I'll walk off to where Shadow is going. This old, battered home <laughs> stares up at the pair of you from the grass. Faded and ancient. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Anything for you two? You just leave the book there. You walk away. I think Zeke will pick up the book. Um, yeah. Okay. Make a note that Zeke, you have the Tome of Strahd. Is in, and uh, yes, but mark off that you do not have the Tome of Strahd anymore. Yeah. Uh, and if either of you wish to read it, it is a, a handout that you should be able to see in, in Roll20. It is yours to yeah. read as you wish. Nice. Sure. Uh, all right. Okay. Well, we know that. <laughs> Shadow and pretty much everybody except is Mark Zeke and Zeros have gone off somewhere. Where do you head, Shadow? Like, whereabouts you head? There is this um, very small round hill. Um, they have these larger kind of like houses dug into the sides on the on the outer edge. And then at the top of the hill is this sputtering campfire and a few abandoned Vistani wagons, as well as bodies. So I, I think probably I'd be attracted towards the, the campfire, the abandoned... Mm -hmm campfire at the top uh, top of the hill and I think, mm -hmm. yeah, I'd just storm off up there and I'd just I'd probably just be staring at the bodies, just like just yeah, thinking the, about um... what I just said and just being like, senseless, this is all sen like, yeah. this this stupid ugh, like <laughs> and we're surrounded yeah. by Strahd's anger and, and you know, the consequence of this, you know you, you get me, you get yeah. me, I think just Yeah, I do, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, there's a couple of things you notice, I mean, it's very easy for Shadow to notice that, yeah, there is one figure uh, at the 
at, at, right at the campfire. Uh, looks like he was stood there, shirt off. Um, judging by his kind of gut and his weight and his demeanor, probably a drunkard, uh, quite a violent drunkard, judging by the big scars on his knuckles, um, the you know scars on his back and on his torso, a bit of a thug almost. Um, throat completely slit, very clean uh, assassination style, you would imagine. Mm -hmm. um, yes, but you know that the body that Shadow sees at the top is a man called Luvash, who had a brother called Aragal. Um, you didn't know them very well. They were they took over this camp when some of the elders here died. Um, they were always a bit of a violent sort, so not the type of people that I think Jesper probably would have spent too much time with. But they were Vistana. They, you know, they were your brothers. Um, they were family in a sense. They were just maybe family you didn't want to spend too much time with, uh, especially when they were drinking. Um, the other Vistani aren't around the campfire. The other Vistani are closer to the edges of the woods, and you can see that those bodies have been marred by frost and by flame. Half of them look like they have, been, you know, parts of their bodies have been frozen solid, uh, covered in rime. The other half look like they've been badly burnt, scorched by some sort of fiery explosion. Um, and they seem to be heading towards the woods. Uh, the other bodies which are scattered all around the, the camp, mainly around the, the houses, are Dusk Elves. Again, Jesper, you know of Dusk Elves. Um, you know a little bit about them, but they're kind of a very reclusive, quiet sort of people. To Shadow and Rose, they they would look like Wood Elves from uh, Faerun to you. They would look like you know Wood Elves that you would meet along the Sword Coast or anything like that. But their ears have all been mutilated, so the, the tips have been cut off, um, scarred, healed up. Um, they look very sullen. They look quite drab and and it's quite sad in a way. And they have been peppered by Vistani crossbow bolts, by short swords. Um, yeah, it looks like some sort of battle took place here in a sense. Um, Rose, I'd say with your kind of natural hunting skill, uh, you'd, you'd you would assume that the ones near the forest look like they were chasing after somebody. Uh, you also suspect that quite a lot of Vistani left here like didn't just like you know a lot of vistani here survived and have since left there are horse tracks there are wagon trails that lead onto the road and then away from here basically um i think rose would probably tell yes for that mm -hmm. to try and sort of give him a little bit of comfort that that people did get away yeah good just to Thank say you. wagons have left this wasn't everyone. No, there's only we're a couple stubborn. of wagons. Yeah, there's only a couple of wagons left, and most of them look like they've been ransacked, supplies taken, that sort of thing. No horses. Some great battle, uh, conflict of interest in taking this land. I don't know. Uh, they always were I reckless. Still, I wish we could. I wish we could know what happened here. Such... This is not wild beasts. This looks like they turned on each other or something. Irene is kind of looking at them sadly as she kind of wanders between the bodies. Yes. Those that are still sane <laughs> try and stick together. Something must have driven them to this. I don't know what. I wonder if it started with this gentleman here, and I indicate Luvash. Um, <laughs> given such clean a cut, and he has not moved, maybe that was the first strike. <sighs> that reckless man. What did he do? You know him? I know of him a little. A little brazen. I didn't want to get to know him much more than treating him with respect like I would another Vistani, but uh, he wasn't uh, in control <laughs> all the time of his emotions. A little reckless, a little drunk, so maybe he pissed off the wrong people. I don't know. Zeros and Ziki, you guys, uh, what are you guys doing? You're kind of at the bottom of this hill. The rest of the team have all gone to the top of it. 
Um, is Mark's rummaging around in some dead elf's house? <laughs> I mean, Zeros is pretty yeah. angry. Like <laughs> he's just yeah, I'm just staring at them. Yeah, watching them do their thing, but almost stopping himself from just going up there and just I don't know. Yelling. Well. <laughs> Yelling with steel. Yelling some sort of draconic words. <laughs> Throwing some sort of draconic claws. Do it. Yep. <laughs> Jeez. Ziki? I think um, Ziki? Ziki would just... I think she'd just be... Just like, she'd be holding the book, just her hands shaking, really teary-eyed. Um, I think she'd just look at Zeros and just be like... What, what have we done, Zeros? What have we done? We did what we had to. Help me, help me, convince me that we did the right thing, please. I, I was so scared, and I, I couldn't go to Lyra. She wasn't there. I just wanted to go back. I wanted to see you. I wanted to go back. To what was familiar, and that was the only way I could. I wanted and to. You got what you wanted, stronger. and I got what I wanted. Oh, stupid! You came back, and now we kill Strad. Stupid, Zeros. I was so weak and stupid, and now I'm stupid again. I can't. How? How has it come to how? You're stronger than them, Ziki. I was scared. That's not. I wasn't strong. I was scared and stupid. <sighs> Look at me. I'm a monster now. I mean, how visually, like, how, how different? What are the major differences? Major differences. Ziki now looks much more gaunt. She looks like quite thin, thinner than she was before. Her eyes are dark, like she doesn't sleep. She looks like somebody who... She looks like a dragonborn who has gone through a lot, like looks quite starved. I mean, there's definitely an element of like... She doesn't look undead, but it's not a far stretch to that becoming what she might look like. Her claws are sharper, her fangs sharper. A lot of that softness that was there for Ziki before has gone. And it's now been replaced by this shadow of death. That's how I would describe it. Shadow of death, sure. Uh... <laughs> uh. <laughs> hmm. I mean, I got, I got nothing. <laughs> it's a zero says, says nothing. Uh, cool. Uh, anything else? Any, anybody else? Got any? Any? Anything they want to do. Um, uh, I'm going to be carrying on, uh, looking through, rifling, asking Shadow and Rose, like, should we follow this up? What do we do? What's our next? Do we find another camp? Do we seek refuge here among the corpses? Do we make a deal with the devil? <laughs> Maybe not that last that. one. I don't say that. <laughs> Slap! <laughs> Shadow, I... as uh, as oh. Jesper is asking these questions, you can't help but notice that as the rain is kind of falling around, this fine sheet of rain that's falling all around you, you can't help but glimpse kind of stood around the campfire watching. The rain leaves impressions of where people would be standing, but there's nothing there. They just appear to be watching, stood there silently like statues. Oh. Is is it um, detailed enough to maybe think that they're no, Vistani the or... It's just an absence, just just an absence an absent. of a person. And it's like a, a humanoid shape. Or, or just it's about a dozen. No, it's a dozen. Oh, just a so. dozen. Okay, just a dozen. And they're cool. just kind of stood and it's only because it's raining that you can even see that something is there the others mm. probably don't even notice it um, can i your highly maybe... tuned senses to the undead yeah 
this is going to be very foolish potentially, but I guess put it down to so much going through her head. Can I almost mm. unconsciously just raise a paw up to near one of them? Yeah, doesn't, doesn't seem to change. You see the outline of this one seems to be maybe a, a woman, like a feminine form, just the slight curve of the shape of the body. And as your claw gets closer, suddenly the rain just falls through it as if there was nothing there. And have the rest disappeared? No. Just that one. How can I help you? There's no response, just the sound of rain. Pitter patter, pitter patter, pitter patter. Against your cloak, against the cloaks of your friends, the ground splashing into small puddles made in the empty spaces of wagon ruts and boot prints. I think I just give a long sigh. I am sorry, lost ones. I have no more words for everything I've seen here. I wish I could help you, but I know not how. If it is grief, if it is loss, I'm meant to guide souls to the other side, but I, I don't know how here. Think you can I wish hear. I could help. Not a whisper, but like a faint echo from the body of the larger man. A rasping sound from the throat, from a torn throat. A gurgling wet. Brother! And then there's nothing. Just the pale, cold, dead flesh of a dead man. <laughs> Anything else? I guess, um... Can I go over to the body and just... Yeah, sure. Yeah. I guess there's nothing. I'm, I'm all out of spell slots, so... Can't do nothing fun. I think maybe... I think maybe... Day, couple of days. Being yeah. dead, judging by the body see that it was he was obviously stood looking into the fire when it happened there's tracks around him you're not an expert tracker but somebody might be able to determine stuff yes Chris Trot. the brother wasn't there right it was just lavash not aragal lavash. just just lavash's body aragal isn't there i know that <laughs> that's all i know sure yeah sure um yeah if you've got spells or if you want to do skill checks anybody now is a great time um, or if it's EP and Zero, kind of, thing they want to do. I feel like yeah. maybe some like a religion check or something. Like sure. I just, I think what Shadow would want to be would wanting to be do some to do something for these. Mm -hmm. I think she would associate what the, the ghosts or what she thinks of the ghosts with mm -hmm. the unhappiness, the the trauma that has happened here. Mm -hmm. So and and she would take the kind of gurgling as a sign from the body that maybe something needs doing, but she's so out of her depth. She doesn't know mm -hmm. the customs, the rituals. She doesn't know how to help the souls. So I think, yeah, sure. I, I don't know if, a if you want to make a religion check. check. Or... Yeah, sure. I, I actually make it more of an insight check. It's less of a religion, insight. more of a trying to determine what may be trying to 19. call to you. What might be trying to do? Nineteen. You get the sense that whilst these these outlines you you're not sure if they are ghosts like actual undead spirits from everything you've seen of barovia this land enjoys toying with people what happened with rose and the body um you the 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 the, the spaces in the rain might just be that sort of effect like something obviously bad happened here like there was a lot of death Maybe places where a lot of death happens tend to coalesce this sign of malevolent energy that preys upon people, um, or tries to trick people, tries to inspire misery and despair. Mm. The gurgling sound out of the throat could have been maybe the last attempts of like a, an echo of, of a spirit trying to communicate. It's the kind of thing that like the speak with dead spell, like if you had the energy left to cast mm. that. This, that would be a way for you to communicate with them and things like that. But um, 
If yeah. we take a no, long I'd say rest. that, yeah, you you get the impression that those are not ghosts, but rather the malevolent presence of Barovia right. trying to, yeah, basically make you miserable. Cool. Effective. Also, Bristol doing the same thing today with the constant rain. <laughs> so that constant topical. drizzle. <laughs> Um, can I turn to Jesper and Rose? Oh. Are they, I'm guessing, you're Yeah, here. Irina, yeah, Irina, Jesper and Rose are basically stood around you. Okay. Um, Jesper, uh, what you said about Madame Ava. Oh, the spirits are communicating. Easy, Shadow. <laughs> Easy. Sorry, I was just a little bit still heated there. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> I was I'm just, just getting go a reading from the other side. <laughs> and that's how it came through. Um, Are they fine? Cats be cats. They're fine. Yeah. Cats be cats. Okay. <laughs> cats, be cats. cats do be like that, though. Yeah. Mm. Um, my one's snoring upstairs, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but what you said about Madame Ava... What I said to the Dragonborn, my life's work is to help people deal with grief and loss. If you need any counsel, any help, I am here for you. I am not the best, but maybe Rose can attest for me that... I try my hardest. I think we should perhaps keep an eye on those two. Xeros in particular. A deal with Asmodeus. There will be tricks and inevitable betrayals. I don't quite understand whatever power Zeki has made a deal with. The spirit of Barovia I, is not something I'm familiar with, but we need to be careful. Of course. The worst part is we're all tied to the same destiny. They want Strahd, we do. We are our goals still align. We must make peace with that. And we must deal with the consequences together. I know that much. We cannot escape it. Mm. Irina kind of steps forward. We need forward. to find out the the right. full details of Xeros's deal. He's holding back. Zeki, I don't think, meant harm. But Xeros, I worry about just looking at the weapon that he has from this deal. There's There's something else at play here. He hasn't told us everything. Irina kind of puts a hand on Jesper's arm. Um, but surely, yes, you are correct. I, I don't know much about these devils from your world and such, but if he made the deal to bring Ziki back, and Ziki's destiny is to help us destroy the devil, the von Zarevich, does that not mean that this devil is at least trying to help us accomplish that? They... Uh, surely, if there must be... Devils always have their own interests in mind. They can make very attractive deals. They can make it seem like they have your best interests in mind. And they often do because they want to use that for their own gains. Do not we trust are aware it. Of that. As long as they are still against Strahd, then we should still try to remain allies with them and make sure that we look out for each other even if it is difficult at times Xeros as you are stood there watching these people, Zeki next to you trembling with the book in her hands you feel that fiery heartbeat that when you were clutching the dagger making the deal, you kind of felt this pulse this like, a, like an intense pulse of warm fire and this time you feel it coming from he who grins the sword you were given and you hear a voice 
Do I? Ah, oh, thanks. Oh, hang on. <laughs> oh, here comes the voice changer. Party, Mark. Ah, my dragon warrior. I do believe you. I owe you some information. Do I not? The voice kind of is this in my head? Mind. In your head. So I guess I reply in my head too, rather than just standing there like, well, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> you don't know. You try. Um, I'll, I'll try. <laughs> uh, you think back, there is no, there is no response. You must speak if I am to hear you. What do you need? So, Zeke, you hear anything Zero says, you hear. Uh, he has to speak yeah. out loud. Can't think these. Um, I just realized my is down. Um, I need nothing. It was part of our arrangement that I give you information on your enemy. I have come to deliver piece of information. Perhaps more will come when my tasks are completed. But for now, I will make it clear to you. Strahd has made a deal with me. He intends to escape Barovia, which has become a prison for him. He hopes to conquer the mortal realms Destroying life and spreading his tragic misery to all he can find. Uh. <laughs> what do I need, Xeros? I don't. I don't know. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> what will returning his soul do? Oh, I imagine it will, in a way, make him not mortal again, but, well, having a soul makes you vulnerable to certain things. But that is not for you to concern yourself with. It will be nothing dangerous to you or your sister, I assure you. I give you one last piece of information before you must get on with the tasks I have. The dagger you recovered was a part of my bargain with Strahd. He intended it to deal with some of his more dangerous enemies, the ones who could stop him. Whomever it slays, it banishes their soul to Avernus, one of my realms. I don't know the exact names that were inscribed upon the blade. I know that one belonged to some powerful mad wizard, one to a celestial of all things, a vampire hunter, an ancient enemy of him, and to a shapeshifter. And of course, you already know, Madam Ava. Good luck, my warrior. I look forward to you completing the first of your tasks. It may be easier than you think. What was his deal? There is no more from the sword. Why would there be? Zeke is looking at Xeros, freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> who are you? Who are you? Xeros, are you? Who are you talking to? Xeros. I'm talking to Asmodeus. <laughs> the deal maker. What? But what about what? what what were you saying? He owed me information about Strad. And he delivered. Okay, well that's good, right? It's stupid of no, I shouldn't say that. Of course it's not. <laughs> He's delivering more to me than these three. I look up the hill at 
Rose and Jesper and Shadow. <laughs> Ooh, spicy. They, I un, they, I understand where they're coming from. They're they're allowed to be mad. I would be too. Do we continue with them? I don't know. Do we need to? It'll be safer for us, or for them, to not be with us. I could, I, I don't, I... I don't know what's going to happen, Xeros. I don't know, and I... Like they, like Shadow said, A life has already been lost. Because of us. Who knows how many more there could be. I don't want to be Thousands another curse on this planet. Thousands have been lost to Strahd. It's time for us to even the balance, don't you think? He brings back legions of undead. You hear bootsteps, uh, foot, you know, footfalls as Ismark comes out of the the house that he's been rummaging through. Uh, he has like a longbow, a set set of arrows, a few knives. Uh, looks like a small bag of rations and foodstuffs. Uh, as he approaches, just uh, he's like, "Well, I didn't find much, but uh, it should be enough to keep us going for a few days." How are you feeling, my friend? You are well, Ziki. You look, you need to eat. We may need to make sure that you get extra rations. I, I found a little uh, more for us to carry. But you should eat more. Thank you. Get your strength back. Thank you. I'll, I'll try. I'll try. I don't know how much that will help, though. But I will try. Ah. Thank you. Nothing like a good a good bit of good bit of food on, on the road. It will put your spirits back up, I'm sure of it. And do not mind too much what, what they say, Zeros. They don't like you said, they can't understand. Do you? Yes. I think so. If anything were to happen to Irina, I would do anything to get her back. I would do anything. A deal with this devil, so-called, that they've said you've made a deal with? If it's not, if it's not Strahd, then it's fine by me. We have to look after uh, our family. We have to look after the people we love. Otherwise, what's the point in all of this? If we're so willing to give them up, to sacrifice them, then what's the point of fighting against Strahd? Why not just all live in misery? Why not all just live and be next waiting in line to die? No. No, I want to kill him and save the people I love at the same time. I want it all. I wouldn't say that around them, Ismark. <laughs> We need to keep things civil, we need to work together, so let's just say that I get you, and I've got your back. Alright? Uh, come on, let's get back with the others. Okay. Yep. 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And uh, he uh -huh. comes up, he puts like an arm around Zeke's shoulders, and he's like putting like, he's found what appears to be like small, like wrapped up, um... They're like sweet cakes, but they look like they last for a long time. They're wrapped up in like uh, cheesecloth and like wrapped with wires. He's like, come, come, eat, eat. Make sure you get some. If anything, these the Vistani and the Dusk Elves, well, they know how to make some good food. So they've still got their souls after all. <laughs> he kind of slaps Zeke a little bit on the back and he's like, come. Um, <laughs> okay. um, Thank yeah, you. good joke. <laughs> it's Mark. <laughs> he doesn't so know. He's just like, yeah, they've got oh. their souls. Yay! <laughs> uh, and he'll start oh, making his way it. up to the others. He'll start making his way up to the others and joining everyone else. Uh, what about the rest of you? What about Hill Squad? What about uh, <laughs> those three as Xeros called you? <laughs> Misery Squad up here. Um, probably, <laughs> I'd be I'd be telling them about the, the shapes in the the rain uh -huh. and the body gurgling and and trying to say something 
<laughs> Just update them on that. If, yeah, sure. If Shadow is explaining that, is there anything that I can yes. do in terms of sort of tracking with my experience to see if I can work anything out to help her? Absolutely. Uh, I would say make a... Well, it depends on what kind of information you want to know. If you want to know, like, how many creatures were around the campfire, where they went, um, survival. If you want to find out, like, more information, if you want to try and CSI the crime scene and kind of be like, I want to know who killed him and how they did it and stuff like that, I'd say that's probably more of an investigation check. Um, and, yeah, um... those are my, those are what I think the two kind of options you have for, like, that sort of knowledge. I might survival it because we can kind of sure. see how people were killed. Yeah, kind sure. of looking like assassin. Yeah, I might survival it. So it's plus five. Uh, Seventeen. Seventeen. So um, there were probably about five people stood around the campfire. One of which was stood next to uh, the body that you have here of. Um, I can't even remember his name. Um, Lu Luvash? Luvash. Um, there was a fellow stood next to Luvash, and they all looked like they were kind of like looking into the campfire. And then very, very quickly, judging by the tracks, judging by the chaotic nature of it, stuff went down. There was a skirmish. People ran down to the Dusk Elf houses. Uh, they went inside. People were dragged out. You can see that like several you know, men were dragged out of beds or like you know, pulled out of the way, killed somebody ran off into the woods and the Vistani gave chase and they're the ones that have been killed with magic, some sort of like fire spell and frost spell. Uh, then most of the Vistani split into two groups. One was led by an individual and they headed off um, west uh, in the direction that you were leaving Valaki. So they, they continued heading west. Um... The rest all used a road that circumnavigates Valaki and goes back east towards um, Castle Ravenloft and towards the village of Barovia. Those were most of the Vistani. The vast majority of them got in their wagons and made their way east, heading back towards Barovia or Castle Ravenloft or the camp where Madame Ava was killed. They seemed to be going that direction. But a small group of maybe sort of like six to ten of them headed west um, uh, from your current position. Sticking to the roads. They all stuck to the roads. They didn't appear to be going through the woods or anything like that. I relay this information yeah, to sure. the team. <laughs> yep. Jesper, I don't I... know if you would want to maybe follow where those that smaller group went since we seem to be going in the same direction. Well, I guess that's our only good lead right now. There could be a chance we could have some help, or we could help them in some way. They might have information on what happened here. Uh, they could I aid could, us. I could probably speak to this Luvash, but I need to rest for quite some time to prepare the magic for that. So that right. would cost us whatever time uh, this group uh, uh, words. I'm very confused right now. There's a lot going on. Um, <laughs> it's already been two days, you said. Yes. Since they were killed. Then we've already lost them. We're not going to catch them up. We can only hope that we find where they settled next. So, if you need the time... Unfortunately, there's not much shelter around here in the, from the rain. So... I mean, there are the little houses. There tents. are the dusk elf houses. We could use these, I suppose. Yeah. Um, it's been about maybe an hour or so since you kind of arrived, like, with all the sort of, like, talking and... Well, not even that, like, maybe, like, 40 minutes or so. Um, since you arrived here. The only question I have is, do we wish to return for the horses and perhaps to see what happened to the old man, Father Lucian? Mm, it's difficult. 
as much as I'd like to see my two horses again. It's too risky for us to go back. They know what we look like. They know what we've done. Word spreads fast in a town. I think they what? will have definitely upped their defenses. I think we were lucky to get out when we did. It might not be a good idea to return. We should press forward, but also get some rest. It's been quite an intense day or so. Mm. All right, let's seek shelter in these dusk elf houses for now. See what the other two are doing. The disgraced dragons. Oh. oh, you see Ismark is leading them up the hill towards you. Um, seems to be carrying a bundle of bundle of gear. Um, uh, as he arrives, Ismark arose. He looks at you. Uh, I wasn't sure if you needed any more, so he throws you like a bundle of arrows that he's pulled out from some sort of um, house. Uh, like quite tight and quite nicely kept, uh, wrapped in like leather so that they don't get wet. Um, very finely made. Okay. Um, uh, he just Very kind of much like throws those to you. Well, we need to make sure uh, we keep uh, supplied as much as we can. Uh, I found some, a few bits of traveling wear, uh, some weapons, some food mainly, but a lot of these houses seem to have been ransacked, so not much left. Uh, what's the plan? Rest here. We, we were... need it. Yeah. Make a new plan. Follow a trail west where some small group of Vistani may have fled. Uh, let's see. I imagine he looks at Irina. I guess the only other village west of here is... Yes, probably Kresik. Uh, Kresik is quite far, but it's on the very edge of um, Barovia. But uh, it's walled and uh, there's a there's a abbey there uh, that belonged to the... the, the Morning Lord, um, that could provide some safe haven. Um, from what I remember, the devil tends to leave it alone. It's it's quite far out of uh, the way. There's a lake there with a tower, uh, an old tower. Uh, and uh, yes, uh, there's also the Svalic Woods. Uh, they can be a little dangerous. The wolves get quite aggressive out on the far regions. Um, but Kresik is safe, at least, I think. Hopefully did it's I, not like Blackie. Did I know the rough location of where the uh, the dragon uh, Argon uh, Argonvorstholt is? Yeah, you know, you know the vague direction. Um, so on the map you could follow it. Uh, you know that if you head west from here, there's a crossroads. Um, if you follow the crossroads west, there'll be a trail that leads to the south and curves around. And Argonvorstholt is an old manor that's um, on the edge of the Luna River. Um, it's on hills overlooking the river. It's kind of in the kind of direction we're heading. It's in the direction, anyway. yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, yeah, yeah. And like like Irina and his Mark Trot, and because I know you know the map, you vaguely know where Kresik is as well. You you know Kresik. You've probably passed it, you know, on your way out of Barovia before. Um, so yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, well, uh, there's a few houses. Uh, most of them have got a couple of beds in them, at least still. So. We could pick a few and uh, get some rest if that's really what you want to do. Um, we can set up a guard, uh, swap out every now and then. Sure. Okay. Sure. Yeah, and just Ismark kind of like lets it, leaves it over to you guys for you guys to decide how you want to do this. Oh uh, yeah, I'll start walking back towards the houses. Sure. And uh, just have a little look around be awkwardly distant from the two dragons but give a glance now <laughs> again uh we're resting i say to those two um yeah i mean i'm just sort of following at this point like <laughs> i'm just sort of around because ziki said to be around uh you guys do what you want to do i'm just sorting some stuff out at the moment so <laughs> I think Zeke will take a while to follow. I think she'll just stand in the rain for a bit and just watch. What's she looking like? Like, what's her kind Zeke. of body language? 
Yeah, um, Moss Henry, yeah. She's just, I guess she's just like clutching the book, like not really looking at anyone, sort of looking at the ground. Hmm. Hmm. Well, uh, there are a numerous, uh, there are a number of Dusk Elf houses for you to, for you guys to choose from, uh, as you wish. I'm just gonna, oh, hello. I mean, just gonna map out. It's nothing to worry about. <laughs> so is that seven houses or? Wait. Uh, there is however many houses you can see. Yeah, seven. Just one's open so we can see what the interior yeah, looks like. Look like. Right, okay. All right, I'm just sorting out all of the uh, tokens for you guys. And then I've I didn't got realize how for... creepy ritualistic this hill looked. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the only thing is, is obviously there's no tent and there are no... Most of the wagons aren't there either. There's a couple wagons, but not many. Um... Yeah, it's all just open topped for, from what you guys can see. Uh, like it was packed up in a desperate hurry. Um, right. Cool. Okay. Uh, so, which was the house that. Uh, can't move is my Mark character, anything? Mark. Uh, no, I know. Don't worry about it for now. I'm just. You guys okay. just chat for a second while I'm sorting a bunch of stuff out. Uh, that means trouble. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Give us a break. God damn. Oh, eight know. hours. Eight hour little snooze. You know, it's, you know, it's a thing and stuff. I, and... Got a snooze. I suggest all of us hold up in one house or two, maybe at most. Because if anything comes attacking, we need as many people alert and ready to defend us. And bottleneck the yeah. enemies coming through the door. Yes. Um, sure. Okay. So wait. So all these houses are around this, the hill and they're all pretty much like an equal height as well around each other? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Very perfect. Like it, yeah. I'm just trying to figure out which one's best, the one by the road or the one furthest away from the road leading up to the <laughs> campsite. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. yeah. Also the route. Who knows, off, right? So like <laughs> surely I'm just asking you I'm just asking you guys this because it's irrelevant. Um of course. I'm definitely not doing something red while herring. you guys are all talking. <laughs> uh, right. Well, I'm just asking I'm you to say... roll initiative just for fun, you know. <laughs> if there's a map, there's an attack. So no. <laughs> oh, if there's a map, there's an attack. <laughs> that's that's not true. It's definitely true. Uh, yes, we'll head towards the this southern one and start snooping around in it. Yeah, all of the houses when you go in them, they're all kind of the same in that they have been torn apart. They most stuff has been taken out of them. It's been sort of ransacked for goods. Um, the, uh, I think, yeah, like there's little bits of food, but most of it is trail rations, things that, you know, um, or, you know, packs of meat that have probably spoiled by now and things like that. The things like the beds are all intact, but there's no blankets. Basically anything that could have been used for something has, has long since been taken out of this place. Um. The rest of it has all been sort of like just abandoned and left uh, for people to do with as they need to. Um, and yeah, you guys are, you basically have a, a run of the place. Um, cool. You have a house Perfect. each, guys. Party! <laughs> yeah, let's take a house each. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Uh, <laughs> Mandy. Yes, butter. What time it's like is when it? You go on, on, on a camping uh, it's, holiday. It's just like after that. dawn, so it's it's you no. know you've got a very faint white light, uh, grayish light oh, yeah. really. It's not really white, but it's kind of a grayish light. 
Um, so it's Sleep just after all dawn. Day and party all night. That's what you want to do, yeah. During Curse of Straw, just travel only during the night. <laughs> yeah, we've fallen into that pattern. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Irina and Ismark will basically take a cabin. In, they'll take one house, uh, if you will. Um, you have to enter them from the front, so it's worth just noting you can't come out the back of the houses. You kind of have to uh, enter them from the front. Oh, facing away uh, from the hill. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, facing away from the hill. Yeah, so each entrance faces away from the hill, and then it's partially built and dug into. It's like a little bit like a hobbit house, do you know? Like it's kind of dug into the hill a little bit. Um, um, yeah. Uh, and I'll then, yeah, you place probably... you guys where you guys want to go. Yeah, I'll Maybe. go with um, Rose and Yesra. Rose. I, mean, I guess Rose, would we go where oh, Yesra is? We're going to have a, a three no, non, no Dragonborns allowed squad uh, <laughs> in one house. No. They're allowed. <laughs> they just clearly that. don't want to talk to us right now, salty little dragons. <laughs> it's more to avoid one person being on their own because I'd probably go with Shadow. So mm. Okay. Yeah, I don't think there's enough beds for three people in one place, but one of you could easily sleep on the floor with like a bedroll or something like that. Um, yeah. Okay. I'll sleep on the floor. It's like in the graveyard after all. All right. Okay. <laughs> cool. So they're in the southernmost one. Is Mark and, and Irina in zero take. In like uh, the southwest yeah, so house, and we're in southeast. 6 p.m. and then you've got 5 p.m. and 7 p.m. basically where your your houses are uh, on a clock. Okay, and you guys are going to take a long rest. Please. Yeah, uh, <laughs> we're not doing rotations. We're in three houses. <laughs> Let's go. I can. Well, I don't need to. Well, sleep, I so think I that probably be busy and around. Being awake. Yeah, Ismark around, is definitely yeah. going to basically take a couple of hours of watch at least. Um, okay. And I think that he, I, Rose and yeah. Mark have done this before, where I think that, yeah, you guys will probably do that, right? Yeah, like, I'll take, you take I'll two take hours, you take two hours. Um, so that gives you at least two, you know, like half of your rest covered. Um, you guys, when you guys take long rest, by the way, you can basically have two hours of watch for free. Like, you can spend two hours of that eight hours being on watch. So, like, okay. Xeros could take two hours, or Zeke, you know, Zeke's awake the whole time anyway, so... For some reason, Zeke doesn't seem to be sleeping. Although none of you except Zeros oh. would know that. Um, oh. Well, I assume she just sleeps the same time as me. <laughs> you do. Yeah, okay. All right. Sure. So, uh, Zeke, you're in with Zeros, I'm guessing. Yeah. Um, and then we've got the three of you in, in the house, and then Irina and Ismark. Okay. So, Rose is going to take a watch. Ismark is going to take a watch. Zeke is awake the whole time. Anybody else? Um, yeah, I'll take two well, hours. Yeah, if yeah, if I can yep. take two hours, I'll. Uh, yeah. Okay. Help out. So, yeah, and you can basically just kind of like be outside your house and everything else. So, who wants to take it? In what order? Um, does anyone want to take first watch? You got four sure. four periods: first, second, yes. third, and fourth. So, Jesper takes first. Who takes second? I'll take that. I'll take second. Rose, Rose takes second. You, I'm Ziki. I'm assuming you are awake for everything. So, whatever happens, yeah. you'll be awake at the same time. Uh, yeah. Third watch. Yo. Sure. Oh yeah, Shadow. Shadow. I'll take last watch. Maybe people will be <laughs> right. more cheery okay. after a little sleep. <laughs> All right. Perfect. <laughs> so, Hi. you guys all bed down as the soft rain drums against the clay tiles of the dusk elves' homes. The wind rattles wooden shutters. You can't help but feel the presence of sleeping in a bed that a few days ago was occupied by somebody else. That a living being called this home once. And now nobody will call it home ever again. So you sleep in it. There's a silence, a soft quiet that permeates through except the pitter-patter of the falling rain. Ah, Shadow, I believe you were taking the third watch, yes? Mm -mm. Am I correct? Yes, that was me. Then I would like Shadow and Ziki to make perception checks. Perception? Oh! This girl got a plus six, y'all. 
Nice. 18, 19, 21, 22, 20, 23. Oh, wait, no. Uh, no, I got that wrong. It's 17. Pretty high. Yeah. Yeah. I am not Nova. So, what's what's happening? Uh oh. You hear uh, those of you who have got. So, we got a 17. What was your total, actually, Zeke? Uh, yeah, 17. 17 total, and then Shadow got like 20 something crazy. The both of you, both of you hear footsteps approaching from the trail that you took to reach this hill. You hear the mixed armored boots of guards. You hear what sounds like flapping wings and the clockwork cogs of soldiers of the lackey. You hear one guard call out, uh, we must, uh, we should check the buildings, see if they're here or not. The, the hound couldn't find any of their tracks, but Miss Lady Wachter says that they have magic, so we should check just to be sure. All right. Should we send the devil to uh, fly around? You hear a kind of screeching. I don't know what that thing is saying, but I think it's just going to do what it wants. Well, let's just get this over with quickly. As you can hear this muted voice coming from uh, where you entered the area. What do you, the two of you do? Is that Abyssal or Infernal? Uh, it would have been infernal. Oops, chose the wrong language for this land. Um, <laughs> can I quietly wake Rose and Jesper? You um, can, yeah. Uh, as you kind of move them, yeah, some of these guys start moving around. I'm afraid we have visitors, and I think they have a little flappy thing with them. Ah, uh, we need to go. Where are they approaching from? The Balaki? The yes, that place, the entrance, the same way. The exit came to up the by. south. Mm. Hopefully, we can rouse the others. I'm going to go to Ismark and Irina. Okay. Mm. Uh, so yeah, you quietly open the door, uh, Jesper, and the three of you can now hear yeah these uh, soft voices. They're whispering, but it's being carried. Even the rain is kind of dumbing the sound a little bit. Uh, deadening the sound a little bit, but you can still hear sort of you'll check this building, I'll check this one kind of echoing across the hills um, do you look towards where you can hear the voices or are you just moving, trying to sneak to the to the other I think I'll try and yeah, definitely try and keep them keep aware of where they are at least Okay. you glance over in that direction and it's hard to see everything because the hill between you and them blocks most of your sight but you see flapping in the air flying above the campfire that has now long gone out over the last few hours um you can see one of those devil-like creatures that when you first rescued irena were trying to kill ismark and her father these little spined devils flapping wings like uh fiendish looking birds uh, and it's circling it's like flying around, looking down at the hill. Ah, I'm going to pick up speed then. And you want to try and that. stealth across to Irina? Yeah. That is a stealth check, my friend. Thirteen. Okay, this thing is actively searching, so I will have it make a roll. Thirteen. Plus two. <laughs> So <laughs> as you so so you would go out and then you'd be stealthing so you go about half speed so five ten fifteen and then would you dash across would you basically be trying to like get across them as quickly as possible yeah that'd be the point where I saw it I've actually got forty foot of movement oh okay so you get an extra mm -hmm. uh, so you get twenty and then another twenty so you go forty so five ten fifteen twenty twenty five thirty thirty five forty yeah so you're you're nearly towards their house. When you just hear a, uh, ah, see them, this house, and that is where we are going to roll initiative. Uh, Damn it! Uh, I'm guessing uh, probably not going to finish this. Up, right? 
Uh, yes, I'm assuming so, because she did she did hear these guys coming. So the only people who are not awake yet are Ismok and Irina. Uh, oh my god, nine. That's the highest initiative I've rolled so far. <laughs> set both of their initiatives to one. Uh, right, Xeros, total initiative. Nine. Nine. Okay. Rose? Ten. Ten? Shadow? Twelve. Yes, bro. Ten. Wow. Yeah. Speedy boy. Ziki? Eighteen. Eighteen. Okay. Hey. Well, Ziki, you are the first to go. You can see... Nobody yeah, has like, shell slots back, back, do they? <laughs> Uh, no, yeah, sadly not. You did not complete a long rest. Uh, this happened about five hours in. Out. We're kind of so, white. Yeah. Um, All those guards from Velaki came looking for the people that fled. Uh, and this was a place en route from Velaki. So they have checked it. Cool. I can't remember what spell slots I my used. Hit points. <laughs> All, all my spell uh, slots are out, so that was easy. But I can't remember how many hit points. I was down to like 20 something. Put it. Put yourself to twenty-five. Maybe. Let's literally call it in the middle. Five. Twenty-five. Okay. Yeah, cool. it's nice and in, in the middle. Um, uh, so I'll fill up my spell slots. Yes. No. Slots sadly, no. No long rest was completed. You do technically get the benefits of a yeah. short rest. So if you want to, if you get anything back on a short rest, if you want to spend hit dice, you may. Uh, okay. Oh, I get my channel divinity back, but there's no one dead, is there? Yeah, I know, maybe. Hmm. Does uh, your channel? It only works against undead, doesn't it? Because you're base cleric. I think you have to have special yeah. channel divinities for fiends. Yeah. I will okay. probably roll some hit dice, though. Um, Absolutely, yeah. You guys can take a short, like, yeah. It's you guys completed like five hours of rest, basically. So, yeah, I've healed up a bit, so it's not too bad. Uh, D eight. It's not bad for you. Wish. You're not a spellcaster out of spell slots like poor Shadow is. Yeah, that's Woo! true. <laughs> I'm basically, I'm, I'm, I'm Zeros, and uh, I'm fully healed. Zeros. That's all I need. Um, uh, screw it. I'm gonna roll one more. Let's do it. By all means, I've rolled Spend exactly the same. Let's hope you get a long rest in at some point today. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> So Ziki had a rest. Okay. She did. Yeah. And then I okay. woke her up. Um, so Ziki, what do you yeah. do? <laughs> you hear um, these figures approaching, and they are moving clockwise, so they're going to get to you and Xeros first if they continue. Okay. Um, um, but I you hear this kind of screech like, I see them! I see them! South! South! Um, I, just, I said to Xeros, I think, I think we're in trouble, Xeros. I don't know. I, I think they're, they're coming. Um, I'll cast... Um, Bless at level one on myself and Xeros. Okay. So you guys both have Bless. Channel uh, bless. fragments of Lyra's power. So that's 1d4, right? To yeah. Pretty much any Saving throws and attack rolls. Yes. Wonderful. Um, do you want to move? Any Hopefully. bonus actions? Uh, let's see. Um, 5, 10, 15, 20, 20. Mm. Uh, I think I'll stay in the house. I think I'll wait on Xeros and see what Xeros does, okay. and then, sure, yeah. Can you do like a One. a held movement action? No, um, you can't. So basically, Ziki is just in the back of the house waiting to see what you do. Uh, hmm. Five, if I run, she stays there. <laughs> All, uh, uh, yes, but you're the yeah, only one who can see this figure. But coming over the hill, you see this is this is no this is no human. This is no man. This is a devil. Uh, standing about eight feet tall, purple skin, a tail, uh, with these long tendrils that come out like a beard and end in these jagged barbs. Uh, you can see a figure with a, a long glaive ragged, infernal-looking armor just comes charging over the hill. For the for the Burgomaster. As it comes barreling over. 
ending its turn. You then hear the, the clank of clockwork gears uh, as uh, some clockwork soldiers do the same thing. 15, 20, 25, 30, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. 5, 10, 15, 20. They're all dashing over the hill. 5, 10, 15. Dashing over the dashing hill. Through the snow. Uh, you see two <laughs> clockwork soldiers also charging uh, towards you. Um, and. Then the spined devil uh, shall go next. This one. 20. Uh, and then, very much like before, the creature will attempt to fling its tail spines at you, but doing so from a long range is at disadvantage. Uh, flings them out towards you and it misses. You see this uh, a, 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 a tail spine thuds into the ground. It does get two attacks, actually. With disadvantage still, so there it is. There it's happening again. Thirteen. It's, the first match it. <laughs> it's happening. Uh, thirteen. I'm guessing misses. Yeah. Yeah. Fifteen. Yeah. So uh, these two tail spines just embed into the grass, the wet, rain slicked grass in front of you, as it's just pointing down at you like ah, ah, kill, kill. Shadow, be on the veil. Um. I guess so. Where's the um, flappy one? Wh- which one's which one's the flying one? Uh, the flappy one? one is this one here. Okay. Uh, it is currently um, flying over the campfire for podcast listeners. So at the very top of the hill, it's flying over the campfire. Okay. Uh, I guess I'll turn to Rose and say. Um, you can't see it in the building, by the way. There's no windows that look out onto the hill inside the, the building. I heard it though. I heard that. There you can was hear a, it. Yeah, you can hear flying. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. I don't know if it's within range, but if it is, shoot the thing in the air, um, and maybe we can blind it. And then can I ready an action to when Rose moves in... You will need to uh, move out of the house to be able to see this thing. Right now, you cannot see anything outside this house. Yeah, I'm not not attacking. I want to ready an action that I'm going to, uh, when Rose moves to shoot this creature, to sight and shoot this creature, I want to cast light on the arrow she's going to shoot it with and the the idea of maybe blinding it um, so Mm -hmm. it can't report aerial surveillance. Um, And then can I run as well, like when that happens? Like, so... You can't run as well. You ready an action to cast light, that's it. No. You, you literally, you are readying your action, and that action is to cast light. Okay. So if you want to move, you got to so move I now. i got to move now, okay. Um, can mm-hmm. I move to yeah. just outside the door then? Um, yeah. So yeah. I'm not blocking yeah. Rose, but I'm just outside the door, and I'll be waiting. Uh, the door the is way. this way. Yeah. yeah. The, your door is the other way, so I'll go the other it way. It faces <laughs> south, though. Mm-hmm. Sure. Uh, okay. Uh, as uh, Shadow moves outside, you hear the huffing and puffing of two very normal guards, <laughs> two very human guards. <laughs> Man, they fell into the wrong crowd. <laughs> I blame their burger. Uh, as they basically spend their turn running up. Rose, uh, your turn. You see Shadow dart outside. You can hear the sound of boots and uh, okay. clanking metal. Boots and cats. Um, boots and cats. I will uh, move out the door. Other way. So it's like five. You have to go like, <laughs> it's like ten feet to get outside. It's to the south. The oh. Faces away oh. from the hill. Sorry. Um, About ten feet of your movement. So I will move here... So that's about 10, so that's like 15. Can I take two shots at thingy? I've got 150 foot range. Then you are still within short range. Yeah, that's what I was just measuring. Yep, so you can fire twice at the the flying devil. Um, The rain doesn't really affect you too much. It's quite a light rain. Um, And yeah, as you pull back the arrow shadow, you conjure a a source of light on the tip First of all, um, put Slayer's Prey on it, and then I will shoot it. What's the range of Slayer's Prey? Uh, Within 60 feet, so I can't. Yeah, it's currently Um, 120 feet away. 
16 plus 9 to hit. Uh, uh, yeah. 2 plus 9. No. Uh, the 16 plus 9 will definitely hit. The tw the 2 plus 9 doesn't comes pretty damn close, though. Uh, it nearly nearly pierces one of its wings as it scorches, as it flies past. Um, damn. The first one hits it. Light isn't... <sighs> You just figure that, like, it's a 10 foot. Eight. You touch an object that's until the spell ends, the object sheds bright light in a 20 foot radius and dim light for an additional 20 feet. Um, it's kind of like a torch level of light. I'll make a roll for it, but it's probably not going to fully blind it. It'll probably make give it some disadvantage, but um, it won't blind blind it. Uh, yeah. What's the total on the damage there, Katie? Eight. Eight points. Uh, just to check as well. Um, you these are not silver arrowed, are are they? So no. The arrow strikes the creature, and you see it kind of scrabble at the light as it does so. I will make a let's make a deck saving throw for it. How about that? Um, so it manages to like throw it like tiny claws up in front of its eyes as this bright light strikes it in the chest, um, and then it snatches the arrow free and throws it to the ground so it lands uh, on the you know below it. But it, it's kind of like blinking. But you can see the the arrow wound doesn't isn't as deep as you would have expected it to be um, from a from your mundane arrow. Um, and then the second one, yeah, just narrowly misses the creature as it flies past. Uh, Jasper, uh, I'm going to continue to move towards the house. So okay. five, ten, fifteen. Going to bash on the door, saying, uh, yeah. Luna, it's Mark. We need to go." Yeah, you um, you the door flies open and you can see Ismark uh is pretty much ready to go. He has um, he doesn't have his scale armor on, but he has like leather armor that he must have slept in. Uh, he's got like his bags mm. and stuff packed. But you can see Irina is still like buckling her armor on. Um, and he's just like, come on, there's no time, leave it. Um, you have to leave it. We have to go. Uh, and she's like, and she's like trying to carry it and stuff like that. They were awake, but they just hadn't managed to have like. They hadn't been awoken before the attack happened, so uh, they are in the process of ready to leave. Okay. Um, if that's the case, then I'll use the rest of my movement. 5, 10, 15, so that's 30, I think, where I am mm -hmm. now. Um, okay. Then I'll start Just dashing. at the base of the hill. Five, Just ten, running into the woods, 15, basically. 10. So directly south is thick no, woods. No, going that way. Ah, I'm going to okay. ensure the dragons are coming with us, too. Okay, nice. Uh, speaking of the dragons, Xeros Mistan. Um, yeah, I'm struggling to think what to do, because if it, it's difficult. I want to move, but also I don't want to leave Zeki on her own if they're this close. So, like, it, it's almost like a... I, I almost... I, I'm basically asking, is... If, if I can do like a held move action, if she moves, I just follow her. You could you could hold your action to dash for her. The other thing I'd say is you could just pick Zeki up and carry her because it'd be effectively an uncontested grapple, and then you're like shoulder carrying her. Like, come on, kick the door open, and then you run out. Oh, if she was stronger, we could take it in turns. I could carry her, then dash, and then on her <laughs> turn, pick me up. And well, then remember she you dashes. move at half speed. If you're grappling a creature, you move at half speed. Joint oh, work. so what you're saying is it's pointless. <laughs> well, um, it's in cases like this where you're going after her, you could you could carry her outside um, and then ready yourself, or you could just hold your turn and take the dash action when she does when she moves. But you're only going thirty. Uh, no, feet. Cool. I mean, I and mean, they they know where we we are, I mean, right? I mean, they certainly are charging towards the person that they've spied, which is Jesper. Yeah, but I mean. Um, okay, I'll go through the door of my one. I guess I can see Jesper, Shadow, and uh, Rose across the bottom okay. of the hill. And I can yeah, see it's not them. night time, so you can see you guys can see each other. Mm, I'll kind of just nod towards Jesper and then like point towards the woods. Uh, and that's... Yeah, just as much of a direction as I can give. Like, while they can't see us as such... Oh, actually... Do I want them to see us? No, it's alright. I just do that. Um. I do that. <laughs> so what is what you're doing, sorry? Just to remind me. Because you talked a lot. Just to 
letting no yet letting Jesper know that I'm here and that I am going to be following, and then okay, but you're waiting them towards the woods. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, Zeros and <laughs> Jesper, you can see. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, <laughs> twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five. It was mainly the inability to move. It's kind of like yeah, it, just leaving Zeki there. That's that's five, weird. Five, ten, yeah. fifteen. 30, 30, 40. A shadowy looking creature uh, looks almost like a large dog uh, dashes down the hill and then it darts into uh, behind one of the, the buildings, the one closest to Xeros, uh, and then just seems to fade away as it curls up into the shadows being cast by the, the building uh, hitting from where the sun is rising. Uh, and it seems to vanish. Uh, Irina and Ismark both pull themselves out uh, and they are basically going to spend their movement dashing over to where everyone else is. So they can basically get over to uh, everyone else. Uh, and they just, they're just just looking around like, what are we doing? Are we running? Are we fighting? Uh, as we go back up to Zeki Mistan. Um, I will follow Xeros out of the house. 5, 10, okay. 15... 20, 25, 30. Mm -hmm. So I think I'll go that way, heading towards the woods. Um, okay. I, dash. I might do a little dash. 10, 15, sure. 20, 25, 30 and go there. Sure. Okay. So you basically just run off into the thick woodlands. It doesn't take you long before gnarled trees slowly begin <laughs> encompassing around you. Um, there is no trail, you're just kind of running past brushland as you journey into the wooded tree area. Uh, the devil creature, uh, the bearded devil, uh, darts uh, forward, uh, seeking uh, to fight someone, basically. Uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. 5, 10, 15. And basically emerges um, s s kind of next to Jesper's shadow, Ismark, brandishing this glaive uh, and in a deep rumbling voice you just hear like ah, we have you now followed by the clockwork uh, thumping of animated clockwork legs 5, 10, 15, 20 25, 30 35, 40. they also Oh, damn, all of them have caught up then. <laughs> 30, 30, 30. Yeah, they are. Oop. They're just dashing. They use their whole turn to dash, um, but that is pretty much what they do. Uh, 5, 10, 15, 20. Uh, this, the flying devil, will actually start descending and it will dash. 5, 10, 20. As it takes cover behind one of the, the dusk health uh, houses just on the like clip of its roof, it dive bombs down out of the reach of Rose's arrows. Um, Shadow Beyond the Veil. Uh, a very angry mm. looking devil man with a beard. A beard made of iron barbs. Was I first in the initiative? I thought Ismark. Uh, no. Uh, no, no. You are, well, you are like, possible. you are not first in the initiative, my dude. You are quite no, like okay. midway down. <laughs> okay. Um, no, I, th I thought we, we were back up. Um, no, no. Yeah, we are. We've so just I've gone got... through everyone because they were just dashing, so they haven't really done a thing. I can't decide whether or not to disengage and run off into the night, or... Um, What's your call? Start f or start fighting. Um, I'm gonna... Can I... Can I disengage? And... Um, can I use my feline agility? So when I move in my turn in combat, you can double your speed until the end of your turn. Um, oh. So I can move 30 feet. So if I disengage, uh, how many were these squares were the usual five, five or yeah. five, five feet. ten? You can ten. easily get into the woods with your feeling. Yeah, yeah. So five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty. I'm off the map. I'm I'm somewhere. I don't yeah. know where I've gone. Um, I'll 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 work out the exact distance. But yeah, I'm just going to disengage and move sixty away. And you just basically run. Five, ten, these guys. Fifteen, are twenty. Same thing. Twenty-five. Five. Uh, 60. 30, 35, 40. Two 45. human guards uh, dressed in kind of armor are like, 
And they're charging like, we found them! We found them! Get them! Where's the, where's the dog? Where's the hound? Uh, they're calling out. Rose, your turn. Two human guards basically come barreling down to join the rest of their forces uh, outside the house that you were staying in. So... I'm just as a as a note. I'm I'm particularly familiar with the forest. It is my favorite terrain. Terrain. If that yeah, perfect. If that makes differences, so I think yeah, we can. Well, you tell me what does it do? Well. What does what does favorite terrain do? Um, I can't remember. Mm -hmm. It's one of those abilities that I don't know very well. It's just uh, I've just scrolled right past it. So, a favored terrain trait. Your proficiency bonus is double-bold for proficient skills when you make an intelligence or wisdom check related to it. While traveling in your chosen terrain, difficult terrain doesn't slow your group's travel. Your group can't become lost your group's except travel. by magical Ooh. means. You remain alert to danger even when you're engaged in other activity. You can move stealthily at a normal pace while alone. So that's not right now. You find twice as much food. Um... Okay, yeah, while foraging yeah. and while tracking creatures and blah, blah, blah. Okay, I'm cool. adept at traveling and surviving, but yeah, it, okay. it affects... So the, main, um, the key things there is the travel. fact that difficult terrain doesn't slow you down and you can't get lost. So as long as you're together as a group, yeah, you're not going to get lost traveling through these woods and stuff. Cool. All right. Well, what's your, what do you want to do on your turn? You want to run for it? Um, you run? I'm probably going to... Five, uh, God, I'm not scrolled. Yes, but you're after this. Uh, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, Once I'm you get to the, the map, edges like here, yeah, yeah. Once you're here, you're in the woods, basically. But I think I will take a couple of shots. Mm -hmm. So you only move uh, a little ways in, I turn go. around. Sure. Probably at the big, scary-looking dude. Um, the devil. A bearded I will devil. Slayers pray and take a couple of shots. Sure. Uh, Jesper and Zeros, you're after this, so just get your turns queued up. Cool. 14. 14 hits? Yep, 14 hits. You are you are very accurate uh, with your bow. Uh, 13. Is not particularly well armoured. Yeah, they both hit. Okay, good. Yeah, both hit. Okay, good. So, uh... Ooh. Oh, no, oh, just as it happens. So she's, no, she's on roll 20. There we go. That's all right. It's back. back. It paused. Um, so, so, 11 damage on the first arrow. Okay, very much similar to last time. Uh -huh. The arrow does not quite uh, cause as much damage as you would have. Five damage Second on one. the next arrow, and then Slayer's Prey, which is five. Get, yeah, that's the Damage. Good. Yes. So this, these two arrows thud into the creature, and you see it kind of just grunts, snaps them off, brushes them to the side. Uh, and the, the holes, the, the Icarus wounds left are not as quite as deep as you would hope. Um, but yeah, you take your two shots. Uh, anything else? Otherwise, I think it's Jesper. Nope, I just disappear into the woods. Okay, Jesper. Your crew is making oh, a, a run for the woods. Zeke, Shadow, and uh, Rose have already made it in. What do you do? You currently have a bearded devil, a uh, clockwork soldier, and two guards, well, two clockwork soldiers and two human guards basically surrounding you at this point. Disengage and run. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> okay. Nice. Okay. So you just run in. You easily get into the woods and very much like Shadow, you disappear further ahead. Um, cool. Xeros. Uh, all right. I'm going to go. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 down here. I'm guessing this is not quite the woods, but... Um, uh, where's the key also... is the woods? Right. I mean, I could make it there, but I also want to kind of split their party a bit. So I'm going to shoot a scorching ray at them with my, uh, with my, with my sword. He who grins yeah. also shoots, which is kind of cool. It does. Um, well, a scorching ray so is actually that... three beams. You choose, I believe it's, you cast it if you check the spell. Uh, yeah, I, I may make well a range the human, human, uh, human and the two little clockwork boys, and just get their attention. Like, hey, over here, hey, hey. Cool. Do you have a um, uh, do you have a spell attack bonus on uh, that? It says I, I have plus three. Um, that makes sense, so... I think, because you're not likely, yeah. 
Yeah, so I'll cast the charge. Oh, okay, I guess that's the first one. That's that's the human. Um, uh, so six points of fire damage is this. You hold the sword aloft. You have to hold it up. And from that gap in between the two blades, you just watch as this spiraling storm of fire shoots out like a beam. Uh, and it catches the man in chest, lights like the, fur cl- like the fur mantle around his neck, goes up in flames, his gambus is on the fire. Ah, oh my god! He begins like flailing around um, as he is set on fire. Uh, well, here I go, killing again. Uh, the clockwork boy, that's a nine. Uh, no, this one, uh, it kind work. of unnaturally dodges to the side. Uh, oh, and then the, yeah, the other clockwork Boy, that's a uh, 15, 18 to hit. 18 and seven hits. Damage. Seven points of fire damage. No. Uh, so the same thing, kind of a, there's no screaming, but parts of its body seem to kind of be superheated, glowing hot embers. Parts of it begin dripping and melting like copper, melted copper, um, as it just hits the, the, the wet grass with a sizzle. But it turns, and yeah, it seems to awkwardly move towards you, uh, sensing an immediate ow, threat. Ow, what the fuck, ow. There's definitely I'm on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Oof, owie. My bones. Right. Wow. Are you done? Oh, no. That's me. That's me. I am hmm. done. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's just that. Anyway, I could have gone. Were you thinking about the dog? Thinking about so let's go, again. It actually can get you. So appearing no! seemingly out of the nowhere, it, like a creature that was invisible that becomes visible, a giant hound made of blackness Ooh. appears and tries to strike you, Xeros. Uh, oh. It will make uh, a bite attack with advantage. I uh, knew it would get me. Hit. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's going to be 10 points of piercing damage. And can you make a strength saving throw, please? Oh, strength save. My favorite. Oh, God, really? 12 with a you plus are 9. Knocked, you are knocked prone, Xeros, as this thing <laughs> bears you to the ground and is biting Jeez. into your neck as its paws are placed upon your back. As you watch all of your allies running into the woods. Um... <laughs> all of your ally. <laughs> Except one. <laughs> Uh, you see, Irina will Bro. do what the others are doing. She will. She's not even doesn't even need to disengage. She just runs into the woods, um, following Rose and Shadow and everything else. But I'll tell you who doesn't fucking run. Seeing his bro on the ground, Ismark the Lesser will disengage. Yeah. In fact, no, he's not going to disengage. He's going to fucking take an attack of opportunity because he's a boy. Oh, um, he's going to get himself <laughs> killed. I love it. Yep, he really will. Uh, the the bearded devil pack. swings at him. Misses uh, as uh, is what 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, uh, uh, 30. Is Mark the lesser to the rescue. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. He has to dash, but he's just like, <laughs> as he just comes barreling over. Zen Zeros! As he's like bringing his like sword and his axe out. Brother! As he's just, Brother! As he charges towards you. <laughs> Um, and awesome. we can squeeze one more combat round in before we have to finish tonight uh, Ziki okay. what are you doing uh, do you want to keep running um, you can. You turn around you can see Xeros like being born to the ground by this creature I'm going to move 5, 10, 15, 20 up here and I'm going to cast kind of uh, guiding along. bolt at level 2 on the uh, on the creature Ba-bam. okay go for it so that is a ranged spell attack here we go. That's a 20. That is going to hit. Woo! And then it's 4d... 5d6. Radiant Damagio. Damn. Ba, ba, da, ba, ba. 19 nice. damage. It's a good 19 nice. damage. Nice. You summon a radiant sphere of energy that s- streaks through the air. And as, that, as it hits the shadow, the, the hound... You can see parts of its body that were kind of almost emanating this dark mist begin to sizzle and burn. It howls this terrifying, deep, uh, blood-curdling cry as it strikes it. And you can see it like turning its head, trying to get away from the light that's now surrounding its body. Um, it seems to be an intense uh, discomfort as you do so. Um, anything else on your turn? Um, um, no, I'm good. I'm good. 
Uh, the bearded devil will turn to the two clockwork soldiers and the guards. Deal with that one. I shall give pursuit after the archer. Uh, as it begins to barrel towards Rose in the woods. Uh, I don't like it. And yeah, he comes barreling into the woods, me? Rose, with a glaive risen. Yeah, yeah, he's pointing towards you. Um, now you are in, yeah, I'm going to give you some cover really bonus, job. Rose, as you have trees and foliage to kind of dart and hide behind. But it is going to try and attack you once with its long glaive, and then once with the iron barbs of its beard. Uh, so... Does a I'm assuming a twenty three will hit you, Rose. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> uh that is gonna be four points of slashing damage. Um then I need you to make a constitution saving throw. As this glaive cuts into your flesh, the wounds you you notice that the blade is serrated and unnaturally sharp. Twelve. Just enough. You manage to kind of quickly pull your arm away before the, the cut goes any deeper. Um, but yeah, you, you can tell that this would have left a very grievous wound on your body had it hit. Uh, but as it does so, its, it's barbed beard uh, spikes out towards you, trying to strike you. But a seven to hit, you manage to leap to the side. See? Roll 20 is just giving me normal rolls today. Uh, as uh, you manage to leap to the side, as the spark. Oh, yeah, exactly. It is an attack beard. I and that's its whole turn. Uh, the two clockwork soldiers 5, 10, 20, 25, 30, have to dash, but they will surround Ismark. Oh, no. Uh, Ismark the Greater. Well, you can Ismark call him that. He, that's just his nickname in Barovia. You can call him what you want. 15, oh. In fact, actually, the, the spined devil, the flying devil, is going to start flying back towards the road from where it came. Uh, you see it just like Poop. beginning to fly away. Oh. Shadow Beyond the Veil. To get more. Um, so I guess seeing Rose getting uh, nipped. Yeah, how far into the woods did you go, by the way? Did you work that out? I'm, I'm, I worked that out. That's the full uh, 60, because I disengaged, and then I so did my feet feet into agility. into the woods, basically. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't I've measured with a little... I think you were about, like, 20 feet into the woods, um, I think. Uh, so I've measured all this little ruler thing that I've just discovered. Holy crap, that's cool. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, yeah, can... just we'll just say that right now you are like a good 50, 40, 50 feet away from Rose and the dark. Okay. Or, I would like to now cast we're into a bit of flame. Of mine. Sure. I will cast sacred deck save? flame on him. Could you make a dex save of 14, please? Oh, oh guess what? He does also goes. have advantage as magic spells seem to be uh, less effective against him. And that is a natural 20. Rolled in that. Uh, Nat 20! I did! I rolled on that 20. Uh, so he <laughs> throws, the, the creature throws itself to the side as the, the divine fire strikes into the tree. Um, not igniting it, but enough to cause it to kind of leap back. Uh, anything else on your turn, uh, Shadow? Would you like so to move got... deeper into the woods? Um, I just want to, let me quickly check the range on something else. Because I forgot to... No, I can't. Carry on. I'm going to stay. I'm going to stay. Well, Rose is being crunched. And 15, 30. Dashing, the two guards attempt to surround Xeros, who is now the on the ground. Uh, oh, they try and surround the two bros. Uh, but that's their turn. Two they dash. Bros. Rose. Two bros. Killing all the guards? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you currently have a angry beard devil, Rose, in front of you. I do. I will take out my short sword and do I get multi attack with that as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get attack. You get to make two attacks anytime you take the attack action. Thrust. Pull a swipe piece. Sure. Um. Not as well. good with the. That's not as good without the bow. Uh, the 12, he deflects it with his glaive, sending it to the side. Uh, it's happened again. So. It has happened again. Hey, at least with the bow, you were hitting, even with low rolls. Uh, but yeah, sadly, switching to the blade, you're not quite as skilled, um, and he manages to deflect these, uh, parry, parries the blows to the side as you do so. Uh, any movement on the blade? can't move because he's next to me. You will get an attack opportunity, yes. Study I the can. Blade. Okay. Uh, Jesper. 
Uh, seeing Rose struggle, he will rush back. dart towards. Yeah, this. you've got forty feet of movement. Yep. Uh, I'll say we need to disengage and run. Lose him in the woods. Run now! I'll hold him off, and uh, I'll do a an attack. I'm going to use bardic okay. inspiration because what I just said was awesome to myself. Uh, <laughs> so. Sure, you can give yourself bardic inspiration as a I bonus action. So great. Do you have Man, extra attack good. as a bard, or do you just make one? I have a second attack fl uh, as part of my... Oh, because of your sword, your college. College. Sure. Um, so right, I will do the first attack. I'm also going to use the, the flourish with the bardic inspiration of defense. Give me an AC of an extra D6. So anyway, okay. first attack. You remember all of that. 20. As a hit. I'll do damage now. And that is how the game works, yes? Here we yeah. go. <laughs> oh. I didn't do Here that. Here we go. Roll. Yeah, that, it rolled a d20 for that drop, so... Yeah, I know. I clicked the... Weird. That's 10 damage. Okay, so very much like Rose's arrows, um, your strike does not seem to have the same force through this creature's flesh as you would through a... A creature made of flesh and bone. I also get a d6 on top of that, which I assume will be half as well. So that's two extra. Another two points, yeah. So you kind of cut through its its body. Yeah, sadly, it uh, does not quite have and the impact. 22 for the dagger. That's also a hit, yep. And... So that's seven on the base damage, and then an extra little... Three flourish of two uh, do you get the flourish to both attacks or just to one i'll double check mark humes double okay. check i'll take it i'll take it for now but just double check that for the future i'll take you an extra two one damage now body consideration and do extra damage equal to the number you roll on the die that's okay so you have to spend extra bardic inspiration to do it so you, if you do it on the first attack that's one use of it and then if you do it on the second attack, that's another use of it okay Sure. So do you want to do that? I'm gonna, I'll just just do the first one and just reserve first my one. second. Um, and then you also get you get five to your AC as well because you yes. roll five on the D6. Okay. Yes. So my armor class Pretty is good. twenty right now. Okay. Is that you done? That's me done, Mark. Zeros. You are prone, I... surrounded. Okay, so I can still attack. I just need to stand up. Yeah, use half your movement to stand up. So 15 feet of your movement to stand up. And then you Perfect. have a lot of enemies around you. You know when you said we can squeeze in one more round? You're about to regret that. I want to multi-attack the dog. Uh, and right. with everyone that hits, I want that to be a sweeping attack. He's got... Yeah, I've got advantage gonna... from... Thing. Advantage. You have yeah. advantage on the first attack from the Guiding Bolt. the first one. And then... And then I want to act... It's a surge and do it again. Superior... Yeah, well, don't forget, you have to spend superiority die for every sweeping attack you do. So, I know. fine. All right, let's see if you hit. <laughs> less? He's surprisingly... He does also have less. He does also have confident. He does do a lot of damage. So, one... so, I need to do, what, 1d20 plus 1d4. So, d20 with advantage. So, 16 plus 10. That hits. Um, right, yep. Don't forget your bless. Oh, wait, can I, mean, I bonus action my hit. sword as well? You've already rolled the dice, Thomas. You can you can bonus no, action... Good. No, you can move between actions. You can't take a bonus action between actions. I don't think. Can I bonus... Well, hang on, actually, do I need to use a bonus action to use um, thingy? Action search? No. no. Uh, I'll no, I'll I bonus action so. between that, then. Okay, sure. All right, so this first one yeah. is just a normal hit. It's not flaming, currently. Uh, so, so normal damage. So give me your damage. 2d6 plus 7. That is 12 damage to that one. And a d8, which is 5, okay, so, to, yep. uh, to human number 1. Yes. Um, now, does that do that to the first guy as well? Sweeping attack. No. Okay. Second attack, which doesn't have advantage. Nineteen million. The that first is. guy. Did you roll the d8 for the first guy? 
Yeah, that was five, that five points of damage. Okay, you didn't tell me that, I don't think. I think you just rolled it. Uh, that no, guy dies. Because, uh, did he? I didn't hear him because I was listening to other stuff, I guess. I, I, I got lost in, in the explanation of the sweeping attack. So the sweeping <laughs> attack kills the first guard. You cut through the, the creature. Um, the cut isn't as effective, kind of similar to the devil. It seems to absorb some of the blow. But then on you bring the sword back, and the second backhanded strike just impales the, the human guard, who clutches his stomach and then falls to the ground, <laughs> cold, dead. Oh. Holy shit, okay. Well, I'm going to keep doing that Second until attack. the next guard die. Uh, the next one was nine, uh, 29 uh, hits. to hit the devil dude. So 2d6 again plus 7. That's you hit, you're 10 hitting the damage. dog, yeah? This is 10 damage to the dog. Okay, so same uh, thing. It another. absorbs some of the blow. It looks very weak, but... Uh, and, and then 4, four to, to the other guard. Human guard. Uh, you cut quite a severe blow across his arm. Oh! Now I bonus action. <laughs> To light my sword. Yep. Action surge so you and do speak, that all over again. You speak deep infernal command word as the sword roars into life. Um, <laughs> flame erupts Which down the blades. Deals, deals 2d6 4d6 damage. Yeah. Well, 2d6 of right. its fire. Roll it separately because okay, damage yeah. resistance is a thing. Uh, oh, oh, 24 on the dog. No, not 24, 14. I was going to say, 14 still hits. But yeah. Oh, does it? It did raise my eyebrow. Okay. Yep. Uh, so that's 13 regular damage. Yeah. And then 6 fire damage. With a flaming stab, you pierce through the dog's skull as it just burns Ooh. into cinders, evaporating away. Pull it free. Damn. The, the shadow mastiff is dead. Um, Holy shit. 8 damage to guys, the other it... human. Maybe a deal uh, with the devil is kind of worth it. You <laughs> stab backwards with the sword and you just impale through the guy's jaw up into his skull. <laughs> pull it free uh, oh, as he falls to the ground dead. You have been marking off superiority die for all of these because I think you only have one left now. I only have one left. Uh, okay, you also have no targets pull... in range, but you can move and make an attack. I've only got 15, so I can't really get into range. Who is the most uh, healthy uh, clockwork dude? The one I didn't shoot. <laughs> oh, I shot uh, I, yeah, oh, it's, I uh, the one north of Ismark is the one that is the most injured. Sure, I'll do another attack on this dude as well. Okay. I guess, can I do a multi-attack, like a movement between the multi-attack? Yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's an actual thing you can do in the rules. Oh. Mm. 13. 13 does not hit. It's agile enough to slip duck down beneath the blade. Um, Almost. But you see Ismark just oh, wait, grinning as he watches plus you four. slaughter a bunch of guys. Total? What about, what about 16? Less. Yeah. 16 hits? 16 <laughs> hits? Uh, Neat. 2d6. Hits. That's, <laughs> that's 15 plus another 3. 18 damage. It, without the fire, you just crush the clockwork, like just <laughs> bring the whole sword down. <laughs> Keep in mind, those Thank of you, you those of you who are worried about Zeros being too strong, he is using every single resource he has yeah. to do this. He's using yeah. all of his superiority die and his action surge. He's a badass, I but mean, he has to use all of his yeah. resources to do it. But dude, bright. I am a when, fire when... tornado right now. <laughs> Burning bright, yeah. man. Like, Burning bright. This is um, the right situation to do it, dude. Like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I was kind of and thinking, Shit, we're in trouble. <laughs> you see, you see Ismark just grinning as he just watches you tear all of these dudes apart, and he's just like, "I knew I could count on you, brother." M -m -m monster uh, kill. <laughs> M -m -m monster kill. Uh, Irina will kind of, um, looking back and hearing Jesper say to just disengage and run, she will run up beside Shadow. She basically has her weapon free and she's just going to ready herself to protect Shadow if anything comes within range. But uh, she's kind of waiting for now. Uh, and then finally, we end with good old Ismark the Lesser himself uh, as he attacks the remaining Mark. clockwork soldier. Yeah. You got this uh, boy. He attacks it twice, twice with his long sword, and then once with his hand axe. His first attack oh. is a hit, uh, as oh, he deals uh, ten Beautiful. points of damage um, to the clockwork soldier. Uh, he brings the long sword down in a secondary strike, uh, also hitting. 
Oh, oh look at this boy go. For another nine points of damage. Uh, as the second what strike, the he smashes me, open really? its front desk, uh, <laughs> breaking many of the internal components. On one dude. He puts like, his boot oh, on it go. and <laughs> shoves the He's uh, clearly been inspired by soldier. you, Tom. Yeah, he absolutely yeah, is. Yeah, he, he turns in a That's kind of like fury. One. She said nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Tears apart the last Standard remaining zeros. clockwork soldier. Uh, and then he basically is like, come on, my brother. And then he, he basically uh, starts moving. <laughs> uh, he's going to move like 30 feet into the wood line towards Ziki, actually. Um, nice. Uh, and that seems like a pretty good point to uh, call it because I'm going to guess... Uh, Rose and yes, but you guys will ultimately disengage and then run away. I'm gonna assume. Um, yes, uh, yeah. at least I will. Okay. Oh, wait, why am I saying? Well, in that case, the last thing I will do then, because Zeki would go, but I don't think Zeki's gonna be Zeki. Would you do anything against the devil, or would you just keep running? Uh, I just keep running. Okay. In that case, all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take the the devil's turn now because that, and then the re then it's gonna turn into a chase. Um, so he will attack uh, Yes, because you guys both go after him as well, so Rose and Jesper go after so he'll make one attack against Jesper and then one attack against Rose so against Jesper he uses his glaive 15 is a miss, I believe because of your defensive flourish <laughs> you just parry it with a cross, cross guard from both of your weapons and then Rose, yeah. he attempts to strike you with his beard uh, and there you go there it is uh, there's the net 20 again uh, Attack hey, that's uh, nine <sighs> points of piercing damage. I rolled a one on the damage, but I need you to make a, a saving throw. Which saving throw? Con it's save. Good. You 15. are fine. You feel like this uh, slick liquid coating the barbs entering your skin, but you manage to kind of like like rub your hands over the wound and kind of throw most of the liquid before it gets into your bloodstream um, as you feel this, this poison kind of coursing through your body, setting that limb on fire. Um, on your guys' turn, you disengage and a pair of you basically start darting. And as a group, you make your way into the woods, pursued. Uh, in fact, the, the devil is the only thing left and it doesn't pursue you. It just watches you from the edge of the forest, um, knowing it doesn't have any more allies left. It just kind of watches from the edge of the woods, just kind of like Aww. with its weapon raised um, as you guys Damn. flee into the woods. And that is a perfect his place. His attack beard raised. Yeah, yeah, his attack beard. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Holy crap. Well, what, what, what an do? episode. What yeah. an episode. That was yeah. some <sighs> of the best RP. I really loved everything you guys did at the start there. That is a big hey. from from your DM. <laughs> loved that. Oh man! Um, and then a cool hey, uh, little uh, kind of desperate fight at the end as well. Little combat, yeah. Inspiration hey, uh, Zeki, you sure no. we need to stick with these dudes? Because uh, I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> 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 Go off with this, Mark. If you would like to <laughs> yeah. split the party, that will be a very interesting game. And yeah, <laughs> sure. Hmm. Well, double the length of the campaign, that's for sure. <laughs> well, no, I don't think we will. No, I think that it will be over no. very, very quickly if well, we decide to do that. <laughs> <I think. clears throat> uh, oh, Man, yeah. Very there's, cool. There's so much that you guys don't yeah. know. So. Also, cool. well, Kim, awesome holy game. shit. Man, I Kim. felt like I was sat on the naughty corner with Kim. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know you, I know you I'm prepped. Sorry. I know you prepped some stuff to say, but that was very well done. Very good speech. Mm. Yeah, that's good. Uh, oh, man. I actually, Very... it only just came to me like five minutes before we started, and I was like, oh, okay, I know the basic outline of what I'm going to say. And then when Jesper and Zeros had their little mm -hmm. fight, that kind of inspired me a little bit more, especially the line about strength. I was like, oh, damn, son. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. sorry, the, uh, sorry for yeah. spooking you. <laughs> the environment <laughs> was definitely a good catalyst for Jesper's yeah, yeah. Yeah. temper. To, to flare. love it, I guess yeah. what what sparked yeah. it, right? Yeah, yeah. The same old arriving in this. Dead. Yeah, <laughs> like Futile. oh, we'll be safe Ooh. here. My brothers will. Oh, they're also all dead. No. Yeah. Fuck. Mm. Yeah. Um, I was gonna let Shadow yeah. tip with you, but that was a a turning point. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. There's yeah. nothing yeah. good in this world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> love it. Love it. Any anything we need to read, Tommy Boy? Um, any demos uh, yeah, or yeah. Oh, 
there is a few. I will do a quick refresh just to make sure I'm up to date. Um, but yes, uh, Yorkshire Dave with uh, $31.07. Thank you very much. <laughs> Don't know why I felt nice. the need to read the entire thing. Missed a few sessions. Sorry, gang. Love you all. Peace. Don't Thank you, you worry. Um, Don't worry about it. Don't you worry. You can join the VOD squad. And until then, you won't be part of the live gang for life. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Pip. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm trying to make it happen. I'm trying to make fetch happen. Mr. Piff with a quarter hundo. <laughs> hey, guys. Thank Just you. thanks. Smile emoji. No, thank you, Mr. Piff. Um, thank you. Christopher Clive. Mr. Uh, hi, guys. Just wanted to apologize for the holy bones message last week. I'm really naive and didn't see any innuendo at all. Mostly wondering <laughs> about the implications for now undead Zeke. Genuinely sorry if it made you uncomfortable, Rhiannon. Oh, that was the, uh, there's holy bones inside you. <laughs> That's what it was. <laughs> oh, uh... right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Because of the yeah, we, just got, we were just confused. Yeah. <laughs> we, I got it, but it was also <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> hopefully not that. Um, Nightjar, uh, love you, nerds. Love you too, Nightjar. Um, yeah. Jawadi, eighteen. Yes. Let the darkness flow through you all. Let Strad feed on that delicious darkness. Well, thank you, Jawadi. Good <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> luck, the girthy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> wow. What a name. Ugluck, That's a great name. Ugluck the Gertie. Uh Ten dollars for the souls of Xeros and Zeki. Thank you very much. Um, I'm you. sure Asmodius will be will appreciate it. <laughs> oh, they were pretty cheap souls. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. Give, I'll, I'll give Xeros a magic sword and some information. Cheap. Cheap souls. <laughs> I'm easy. <laughs> um, Ashlo. Hello, lover. my lovely. I know you all like a giggle uh, with your D and D, but my gosh, can you RP when you need to? I love it. I hope you're enjoying it as much as we are. Love, uh, sorry, look after yourselves, Ashlo. Man, I am loving it. I am loving Dude, it. So yeah. I, I, hope, I hope you're really enjoying have. it as much as we're enjoying it. It is literally my favorite thing. You can see it on my face. Like when you guys are really going to town on the RP, and I can just sit back and watch. I'm just like, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah the popcorn. <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm just, yeah. I'm loving this it. This gonna be good. I made this. <laughs> I <laughs> My friends are fighting. Yay! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I made them. Yay! Party conflict. They hate each other. Party conflict. <laughs> yes, um, good fight amongst yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, Chromium two four six. Hello, everyone. Just wanted to say hello and thanks for everything, especially for providing a distraction from life right now. Uh, I appreciate you all. Smile emoji. Thank you very much, Chromium. Um, James Hunter, 4444. 4444. Um, oh, boy. This campaign is already getting quite juicy. I always look forward to the next episode. Thank you, James Hunter, 4444. Ravager 4. Note to self. Never get on Kim's bad side. Shadow bringing the fire tonight. Also, yes, from my experience, if there's a map, enemies will attack. Nine times out of ten, I say this as a DM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Varys with a donation and no message. Thank you very much. And finally, Adajack23. Top tip, shrink, then cast Mage Hand to pick yourself up and basically fly away. <laughs> I, mean, I think... In the raw rule, in the raw rules, that only works if you're a gnome because you have to get to under five pounds. But a gnome can do that. Gnome. Yes, really. Yeah. It's, and it's um, like twenty when. feet. It's like a twenty foot fly speed, by the way. But yes, it's really? the it. thing you can do. Worth it. Dragon Ball Z uh, flying finally... on a cloud. Yeah. But except it's a uh, tiny yeah, hand, and you're about it. four inches big. You're like. <laughs> Just zooming away with your <laughs> finger mage hand. <laughs> you're, you're not even moving faster than you could if you were walking. You're you're moving slower, I think. Uh, yeah, I but that. who's going to chase that? And the final part of that message was, also, <laughs> Trot was great in Danger Mouse. <laughs> what? Like, what is that? Danger Mouse, the old, like, Oh, no, it's 30 80s. feet. 30 feet. What, as Danger Mouse? Right. I guess so. Uh, it just says... You were great in Danger Mouse. 
Yeah, true. What's up, Kevin? I mean, Rhiannon? He was he was in danger, Mouse. I mean, can't 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 argue with that, right? <laughs> I love him. Can't argue with it. Apparently, a legend. No, a legend. living legend, exactly. Um, We've also got some gift subs from Reika Sayuri and McSalt, some cheer bits from Criminal Sapling, and Mark apparently got a gift sub from uh, Reika, so congrats, Mark. Oh, there you go. Are you not subbed? Yeah. No. You're not subbed. Why would I sub to a channel that I, I so make on? Daddy play. suck. <laughs> Daddy suck. Nah. Daddy. I just wait for someone to give me crit. a sub. <laughs> okay. Sure. That's sure. That's a good way of doing it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, thank you all um, so much for joining us. A fun, super fun episode. Mm, we'll be yeah. back on Sunday for Erois. Uh You can also, if you want to check, I will be on the D&D Twitch channel in a couple of hours to do the wrap-up show for D&D Live, which is going on mm. right now. You can go and watch uh, some mm. famous people play Dungeons some and Dragons for Red Note Day. Get some caffeine yeah. in you, raise the... money for charity. No, you, yeah. Mark. You've got to stay awake. Yeah, you, oh, yeah. yeah. I'm up till 2 a.m. every I'm day. I'm literally like... Okay. I'm, I'm so Dying. sorry. I just started yawning. I've, it's been Long a week, work. man. It's been Don't such worry. a week. Don't worry. Yeah. I'm, I'm definitely an insomniac, so it's fine. All right, cool. Well, thank you very much, everybody. It's been a great episode. We hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time. Mm. Take care. Nice. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.